Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor. So today I'm going to take you through all of Unity's plans for 2025. This will go through everything that they announced at GDC and everything they've announced recently when it comes to supporting the Switch 2 when it launches and also even the game that they're creating finally. And I'll link to the full video for that if you want to check out all the news on that game too. I do apologize for taking a while to get this video out, but my wisdom teeth have been a massive pain, so it's stopped me for a little bit of time. I'm going to try and condense the whole GDC talk and everything down because it was about 45 minutes, so I'll put the link down below, so I'll give you everything you need to know. And if you do find this video helpful, be sure to throw a like and subscribe because it helps me out massively. Do comment down below after you've watched this video and let me know, does the future of Unity in 2025 look bright or is it something you're still worried about? So first of all, Unity started out by saying they've got a commitment to the engine. They want to use Unity in real world production in their process, which is called production verification. And Unity have been partnering with big game studios at really large scales to have the engine tested so you know that you're getting the most out of it. And they've also been co-developing with other studios and working on Phasmophobia and previous titles like Marvel Snap and Dredge. And this is all in the idea of getting the performance and stability right for the entire community. With the launch of the Switch 2, they will be supporting this platform and they will be making their own game called Survival Kids, which is also something that they've used to take all of this information that they've learned to make the engine better. So ultimately, Unity 6 has released and it released in October of 2024. And as they said, it's had 3 million downloads and they're taking a bit of a fresh look at exactly what the Unity release is going to look like. So Unity 6.0 will be in LTS for the next two years and three years if you are a more corporate developer. And it will have a slight adjustment to the releases. Now, looking at their little map here, you can see that the 6.1 is in beta now. And it will probably be very shortly out. I'm guessing the end of April, May time. There is no confirmation on any of this. And then they will continue to modify 6.1 with 6.2 and 6.3. But they really made a concession in this where they're not sticking to any particular dates because it's maybe what they find in the future. So they talked about with Unity 6, there is support over 20 different platforms. Most notably, the newest one being Switch 2, along with their release game that's going to be on launch day for the Switch. The Switch on 6.1, there's going to be updates to the platform browser and the build profiles, which I have a tutorial exactly how to look at how to do build profiles in Unity 6. But this is going to have brand new improved onboarding for more configurations, predetermined settings and recommended packages for each platform that you expect to have or if you've got access to if you're a developer for a particular console and it's going to have overrides so that you can set graphic settings quality levels and rendering settings for each different settings you have for a particular platform i want to take you over pc and console rendering performance and all of these features will be coming in unity 6.1 now they've got brand new support for directx 12 multi-threading which they suggest that there's up to 40 percent reduction in cpu time over DirectX 11 for it more increased performance and DirectX 12 PSO caching will reduce rendering stutters when you're using it throughout and PSO is specific for scene loading and level transitions to make that much quicker and faster. They'll have a brand new API for PSO caching to reduce a frame time for up to 75%. They also have something new on their ray tracing features, which is called solid angle culling, which avoids processing really small or instance objects. And you can save, as they suggest, up to 30% to 60% on the CPU. There's brand new memory allocation, which could have a reduction of up to 75% on ray tracing memory and brand new compute driven ray tracing so you can get more out of your ray tracing techniques. Looking at specific GPU performance, these are all 6.1 features again. It'll be adding the deferred plus to URP to get more out of it. So you'll have more real time lights to be able to be used. You'll have GPU resident draw compatibility as it was with Unity 6.0 and optimized deferred for mobile to be able to create more with that. And there'll be a brand new shader which helps build times for up to 50% to make it much, much faster. Also a 25% performance increase with something called LOD crossfade stencil mode. And there'll also be brand new variable rate shading which controls, which can control draw calls and passes to the rendering. And it's supported across most big platforms and there will be a sample demo to go along with that too. As you can see from this slide here, Mesh LOD was supposed to be coming in Unity 6.1, but I imagine now that they've pushed it back to somewhere later in development, 
which will be the brand new LOD system, which will create automatic LODs from one particular model, whether it's skinned or otherwise. So you can really set this up in the editor and save some massive optimizations right there. Wanted to touch on something that I made a video about and it's called the Project Auditor. Project Auditor is something they talked about. I do have a full video on showing you how to use it and how to get started with it. It allows you to analyze scripts, assets, projects, and get insights into exactly what should be changed on how to get better optimizations within your project. So this does work with previous versions of Unity 2, but it's just something to keep in mind. And I'll put the full link down below so you can check out my video if you want to check this out because it's quite a cool one actually. And they did go on to say that they're going to be in some time in Unity 6 generation, they're going to be adding more insights into the profiler. So if you're somebody who's looked at the profiler before and doesn't know what's supposed to be going on, it will give you more targeted ideas and tips on exactly what you need to do. So whether you need to reduce CPU frame time or otherwise, it will give you suggestions on how to make this better. They did talk about for the generation of Unity 6 is to be constantly improving ECS for Unity. So it would be adding Entities 1.4, which will have improvements, optimizations, and fixes. We'll also have improvements in 2022 LTS to go alongside it, and it'll have improvements to the job and profiler, so you can get more performance out of it too. Along with all these things that they mention, they're constantly trying to improve it in the future. As this slide suggests, that in the future is a big one for them, that they always want to be constantly pushing so ECS becomes a bigger part of the graphics pipeline. They upgrade everything to Core CLR to keep up to date with the latest .NET framework, so then you can get the best performance and the fastest iteration for constantly allow them to update and keep it as fresh as it possibly can. And it's a shame this one isn't coming sooner. The content pipeline is how you import assets into Unity. They want to make a full refresh on how this is done. So it's not something where you have to sit there and wait for 10 gigabytes to import into Unity. It'll be something that you can do and it'll be done in the background and only import what you need. Briefly go over their AI and things that you could expect. This will be throughout Unity 6 release. You'll have improvements to Muse Chat, which is integrated fully in the editor to give assistance to repetitive tasks. It'll support game objects and components. And if you've got errors, it'll be able to help you debug more quickly. And it'll have pre-generated code and other things to be able to use more easily. They've been saying that they will be integrating the asset generators into the workflow. So you will get more improvements there. So in an example with the animation tool, you'll be able to use videos to create animations using prompts within the editor. So you'll be able to create those more easily. Sprites will have an introduction of new libraries with pre-trained models. So you'll be able to create things more easily like icons, backgrounds, characters, and things like that, if this is what you're interested in. And they will be releasing, which is there's no set down generative audio, which is sound effects with up to 10 seconds. Nobody's seen this yet, but it will be interesting to see how it goes. Future Beyond Unity 6 is their generation for other things like 3D meshes, skyboxes, and other types of generative textures, which will apply to those models. They went to touch on the UI toolkit, and they will be introducing the World Space UI option because it's something that's really missing, and advanced post-processing filters to have things like blurs and color shifts directly in there so you can access those more easily without creating other things yourself. Brand new inserts for customization, selective shading, and shader graph integration so you can do more customization to UI more than ever before. And adding the introduction of being able to use vector graphics to increase more scalability and have smaller file sizes so it's resolution independent. So even if you zoom in really far, it's perfectly fine for you. They did touch on some full desktop and UI integration for being able to assist accessibility features for people who have my visual impairment. So it'll be able to read out the screen specifically on UIs and that will be built in to the UI toolkit too. They do say at some point in Unity 6's generation, there will be the brand new animation workflow, which is specific to any type of skeletal mesh you'll be able to use. And it'll be able to take any character of any proportion and be able to retarget that to use that in your game to reapply animations much, much more easily. And the even preview sockets so you can have attachments and things that your character would carry around and make that easier to apply within your animations. It'll have brand new animation blending and as I said, brand new remapping so you can reuse clips and take up less storage when you're doing so. 
and we're just continued committed to better performance when it comes to using this for burst and jobs, have brand new multiple track support when you're using animations, and being able to use a hierarchical state machine to be able to control exactly what your animations do. So in a lot of their demos, they're using thousands of characters with the animation system, and it's far better than it's ever been before. They did touch on physics, which we don't normally see in a lot of these, and even in Unity 6 now, you could choose between Unity and Havoc physics directly out of the box. They are going to add a new simple physics switcher, so you could do this in your project settings, so you can choose whichever type of physics support you want. It'll have continued improvement with the tooling updates and new solvers for Unity's built-in physics. They do intend to make an ECS-based vehicle controller, which will be compatible with Unity and Havoc physics, so you have something to get going right from the start. They did briefly talk about teamwork and build automation in the editor for Unity 6.1 will have a much easier way to do cloud build support to be able to launch to the web, Windows, Mac, iOS, and even more, so you don't have to then navigate somewhere else to do it. Sometime in 6's generation, they'll have more collaboration and project sharing features, which can share local files with your team, and preview files on any device so you get less conflicts and issues. They did go over a lot of multiplayer based features and they have their multiplayer center which can help you create multiplayer games more easily by having a list of questions and boxes that you could fill in and it will give you suggestions on exactly what multiplayer features and add-ons and other things you need to add. In 6 they did add multiplayer play mode so you can have multiple instances of your multiplayer game running at the same time so you don't need other machines and other things being more cumbersome. They did say in the future of Unity they're going to have something called the Project Center which will be something to help you take other things that have been created whether it's production or first party or third party solutions which you might have a bunch of tools which you can already add to your multiplayer game to make this faster and quicker to accelerate so you can prototype quicker and get things going so you can refine your game and concentrate on the things that are most important rather than you getting bogged down with multiplayer. Who knows how good this will be, but Unity have been constantly trying to push their multiplayer solutions with their own dedicated servers and other services that they offer. They'll constantly try and improve on matchmaking improvement, post-migration for ECS, and have a lot more cross-platform burst determinism so it makes it better across the board. And they're also going to add multiplayer local host and Android support for multiplayer play mode as well, with constant improvements that they want to do with netcode and other things in the background. Specific 6.1 features which will be brand new for Xbox consoles and PC. So the GDK selection when you're using Xbox, you will have a toggle to be able to choose different versions. So you don't have to change the editor version to be able to use different versions of that development kit when you're wanting to use it. And they'll have brand new API changing for the saving solution for Xbox console and a brand new integration in Unity 2022 and early Unity 6 to have encryption by stable key. Talking about Unity Web, which is a big thing that they've been pushing in Unity 6, where they added web mobile support so you can actually launch your game within the browser and do that directly there without anybody needing to install anything. In 6.1, they want to add a web GPU, which is their brand new graphics API to be able to use compute shaders, visual effects graph, and many other different APIs to create far more than you ever could on the web before and a push to the instant game service on Facebook and Messenger so you can launch directly on there and get access to the millions of users that are on those platforms. Specifically looking at their Android selection, sometime in Unity 6's lifecycle, they'll have the latest APIs for Android, so it'll be useful for larger screens and foldable devices with brand new configuration changes for that. They will have the 16 kilobyte page size ready performance across Unity 21, 2022 and 6.1 which is out of the box support for the 16 kilobyte devices, which will be very useful so that Unity is ready for any future involvements. And they will be continuing to enable Vulkan and the graphics jobs for the recommended Android devices. So you'll be able to get more performance out of these and use device filtering to make this happen. They did touch on Android XR, which they've made a partnership with Google to offer day one support when this launches. And these will all be Unity 6.1 features, and it will be the integration with Unity's AR and XR Foundation toolkits, support for a wide range of Vulkan 
and OpenXR frameworks. There'll be brand new compatibility and setups with the XR templates and dedicated Android XR build profile. So you'll be able to get this going as soon as it starts and optimized for performance in terms of fixed eye foveated rendering and the URP space warp additions. Then for things for constant improvements on that side with a MetaQuest, they'll have better graphics and rendering with something called MVPVV, which is multi-view regions. And this can reduce GPU times by around 11% because you get better times and there will also be new build profiles for the MetaQuest so you can get built even faster. So there are more things for mixed reality. So occlusion for seamless blending and fully boundaryless experiences. And then brand new multiplayer templates and shared persistent anchors. And they will constantly try and improve this too to give you all the up-to-date VR features and XR improvements that you can need for future projects. So again, I'll put all the links down below to everything that I've talked about whether that be Unity's announcement for Switch 2, the new game that they're launching, or any videos I've done on build profiles, any of the new features, so you can have all the information down below. Be sure to let me know what you think of the future of Unity in 2025, if Unity are really on track to make improvements to the engine because of their core commitment now to put developers first and make this engine more stable than ever. I'll put all the other links down below to Unity sales and everything you can grab for game dev savings, and do be sure to come and check out my Patreon too to get over 225 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. Massive thank you to Peter Steiner, Very Shooter and Party of 10 for their amazing support. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.